Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Thank you, Chineke, for this wonderful blessing that we call today. If you can inhale and if you can exhale, that, that means your prayers have been answered. That means that you are doing so much better than so many people six feet under. Be grateful that you are here. Whatever it is that you are looking for in life, you will get it because guess what? You can inhale and you can exhale. That's the first blessing. Welcome to Chiism Live. I'm your host, Kitty Dr. One on your house summary. It is my pleasure to have you here today. And of course, as usual, it is my pleasure to welcome my co-host, Didia Okada. You'll be on your house. Yeah, guys. Yeah. Day, well, no. Isn't How are it you? wonderful to be in and exhaling uh, today? Fresh air. Got my first COVID fresh shot. Air. Waiting on the second yeah. one. And hopefully after that, I'm ready to go to hell. <laughs> <laughs> I got my shot too. And yeah. I'll get my second. And that means we can start get ready to live again. Whatever to live your again, prejudice to have a little is fun. Yeah, travel, you know, uh, get together with friends. You still maintain yeah. your social distancing and you still wear your mask and use your sanitizers and all, you know. But yeah. at least from yeah. what I understand, this guarantees that you don't end up in the hospital if you have COVID. So that's good yes. enough for me, yes. you know. Yes, what a blessing. Yeah. What a blessing. Yes, it is. Um, yes, it and is. Our, our topic today is... Uh, let, let's see. It's on morning. Morning. How do we celebrate morning in African tradition? Well, first and foremost, it's imperative that we start by pouring libations. That's the first thing we do, is we pour libations. As you know, libations are different in different cultures. There are some people who pour libations using wine or whiskey even and there are some people who pour libations using plant or just plain water but before we get started we got to wake up the ancestors so i am going to right now have some drumming very brief drumming thanks to queen mother oshindara and uh, she sent us this uh, video and it's uh, we're going to be using it as often as possible and so before we get started, let's just wake up the end.
Yes, with the drumming, the ancestors are ready to listen to us. Say, Ise. Ise means that you agree with me. You can say Ise, you can say Ashe, or you can just say yes. You can say, I hear you. Whatever it is you wish to use as a way of acknowledging what I've said, please use it. Today, I'm going to pour libations with water, but I have a precious water that I went to the Clinton River with my daughter, my youngest girl. She has some things that she wanted to express to the ancestors. And what better place to do it than in nature? So we went to the water where the water spirits, the water goddess, Ukuruchi, the water god. We poured libations. I tell you, I couldn't pull her out of the river. She said, I got to stay a little bit more. I got to say because she was filled with the knowledge that she has put it out there. She has mm -hmm. called upon the ancestors and that everything will be all right. And that's I say, yeah. Mama no like The spirit has heard the first. Yeah. The la the other ones are useless. Once the spirit oh, yeah. has heard it, you're good to go. Yeah. So I'm going to pour libations today using the water that we got from the Clinton River. We've already prayed on it. You see, part of the importance of libations is a part of your belief system, the African belief system, that the ancestors are never too far behind if you call their name. If you call Chineke and ask for what you want, and then you call the ancestors who will be there to serve and answer, you're good to go. Yep. That is what faith is all about. Libation is our faith in our God, in Chineke, ourselves, our communities, and people who are on their way. So when I pour libations, you may hear me pour it in Igbo. I'll speak in Igbo. I'm from Igbo land. I'm an Ukuru woman. So you may hear me speak libations, uh, speak in Igbo. But I will translate so you know what I'm saying. But today, the, I have oil, which I'm not going to use, but I have salt. Salt is very cleansing. Salt is very cleansing because, as you remember, if you have toothache, they ask you to add salt to water and rinse your mouth because salt purifies, it removes things that shouldn't be there. And so we add some salt to the water because what we're going to be asking for today, and we'll just shake it a little bit, is for cleansing to cleanse our bodies, our minds, and present positive energies to us. In our space, I take a little bit of it and spray it in my space. Only good things should be in my space. Only good things should be in your space. And you should, when we pour libations, you should get your own container. I'm going to pour it in a container. You should get your own and pour with me. If you don't have it right now, you can absolutely do it next time. Water is so critical to what we do in life. So I want you right now to just imagine yourself planted in the ground with your feet on the ground. If you're sitting wherever you are, it doesn't matter. Just plant yourself where you are and just imagine that your feet have roots. And you're anchored by those roots because that's what anchors the tree. You are a tree. Imagine yourself with roots on your feet and imagine those roots going down to the river, to the water underneath you to anchor you. And all of us are anchored together right now, wherever you are, we're all anchored because our roots go all the way down to the river, the precious water. 90% of our body is water. So I'm going to pour libations for four things today. First of all, I'm going to pour libations. I'm going to pour libations. 
Osisi ka ibe ya. Onye ne nyo mo we nji. We call Chineke so many different names in different tongues. Oh. So I call upon this powerful energy that gives life. The reason why you and I are here today is because we have been given the opportunity to inhale and exhale. So we say thank you, Chineke. There are many people who are not experiencing what you and I are experiencing today. That's because Chineke has given us the opportunity to do whatever needs to be done. With breath, you can get it done. If you didn't do yeah. it yesterday, you can do it tomorrow. That's why you have breath. So thank you, Chineke, for that blessing. Yeah. And you can call yeah. it in whatever language. You can call God, whatever. Whatever name you have. Allah. It's all the same, the same energy. I say thank you, Chi, male energy. Thank you, AK, female energy. See. This wonderful opportunity that I am standing in and it's called my today, and that is your today as well. We're gonna pour libations. The next thing I want to pour libations for is for the ancestors, those in whose footsteps we tread. <coughs> we don't go on our own by ourselves. It's not a happenstance. We did many, 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 many years, thousands of years. There were people in our past, in our history, that made us what we are today. We want to give thanks to them. Those who picked yeah. us up when we were down, those who taught us how to walk, those who taught us how to speak. Yeah. Those who have achieved the ripe age of 80, they're now ancestors. Right where I am, they are. Say. We are surrounded by the power of the ancestors. But if you don't call their names, they're not going to come. You call and they answer. And so we call upon the ancestors. I want you to call the names of your ancestors. No. 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 He say, Dr. Martin Luther King, say, Rosa Parks, uh, Julius Yenere, Patrice Lumumba, Patrice Lumumba, he say, Kwame Nkrumah, he say, Marcus Garvey, he say, he say, Joma Kenyatta, he say, you call up wherever you are, I hope that you're calling your ancestors, you see, if you don't, they never existed. The ancestors exist when we recognize them. So if you don't call out your ancestors, they don't exist. So call their names. I am going to Dr. Mandela Zikiwe. He say, he say, now say Mandela. He say, he say, he say, he say. Thomas Sankara. He say, we ask them to surround us, to surround say. us and clear the path for goodness to follow us wherever we may yeah. go. We want to pour yeah. libations now for ourselves, for us. Because it's important for us to understand that we don't work in a vacuum. We work together. Yeah. Unity in anything we do, in thought, in action, that is what we ask for ourselves. That's what yeah. we ask ancestors, ancestors to make possible for us. That's what we ask Chineke to make possible for us. Unity. To remind us also that if we look in the mirror, that person that we see, somebody say, he say, is good yeah. enough. That you're good enough. You don't have to change yeah. your skin color. You don't have to change your hair. You can be who you are. You are all that and then some. You say. That's what it means when you are able to define yourself. We ask for such knowledge that we are good enough and we can change what we don't want. And we can do it collectively. He say, See. whatever my brother is going through, my sister is going through, it is my responsibility to see them out of it. See. If I'm climbing the mountain top, I must reach down and pull my brothers and sisters up. Hold on a minute. If, I, mm. if I have a pocket, let my brothers and sisters have it. You see. 
If I'm climbing the ladder, let them go come with me. He said, oh. This is what our ancestors would want us to do. And I want us to pray for the ancestors to ask us, to teach us, to remind us why we're here. We're not here on this earth just to inhale and exhale. There is a purpose. You have to ask yourself, why are you here? To make the world a better place for humanity. You say, you say, oh. Ancestors, you say. we ask you to rem remind us that. We are not here just for our own good. We are here for the good of the world. Every one of us is important. Every action we take, there is a reaction. Chine can teach us because from a higher name, because I name me from a eh? When you do things, others follow you, they do the same thing. If you what you do for your fellow man, what you do to your brothers and sisters, what you do for anyone that has negativity attached to it, it will bounce right back to you. So you be careful. You be careful because sometimes you try to make up for the past, but you can't. So try not to create a past that you have to make up for. Somebody say, he say. You say. You need to ask each other, what is it that we can do to create an environment that's peaceful, that's loving? What can we coordinate? that will make the world a better place, that make our children better off, that will make our neighbors better off. What is it that we have in us that we can use? And most importantly, Chineke, ancestors, give us faith in you. Remind us to have faith in you and your ability to move us forward. We have the capacity yeah. and the ability. Now I want to pray for those who are on the way, for the children who are on the way, let us be careful that you don't create children that you're not ready to support, that you don't create children you're not willing to support, that you don't do things that will impact negatively on the children who are coming behind. Yeah. As we pour libations today, let us be reminded. If on your chuck off, you say, if on your chuck off, you say, what we see. So shall we find? He said, "What we see. do, so shall we find?" He said, see. "If the road is 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 broken, it is because we haven't fixed it." He said, "If the heart is broken, it's because we broke it. So we have to fix it. We have to heal it. We have to heal each other. We have to heal ourselves. We have to appreciate ourselves. We have to appreciate our cultures." If and I ain't way up. He said, "I said two Oh, okay. We own something and we throw it away. We will never be rich. We are good enough, he said. He said, oh. We are good enough, he said. He said, what we have prayed for, what we have asked for, that's the way it's going to be. And so it is. Yeah, yeah, you did join me. Let's clap for the ancestors. Let's yeah. clap. God, wherever you are, please be sure, be sure to show your gratitude. Show your on on a on off your nose or tell the yama. On off your nose or tell the yama. There's an African proverb that says, "When elephants fight, the yes. grass suffers." Yes, yes. So if we're not together up here, then those that are at the bottom, yes, bear the brunt of a disunity up here. So we have to be careful that we hold it together up here yes. so that those that are down here can feel that vibe. Yes. And use us an example as a beacon of how they're supposed to conduct themselves. So we have to do the right thing. But I wanted to go back to what you said in the beginning about faith, right? And uh, I personally believe there are really two ways to look at faith, right? Uh, the first, uh, the, 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 should I say the, the spiritually fulfilling way to look at faith is putting actions behind it. Yes. Right. Yes. I was told that, okay, Dibia will give me a job. I am, 
I have faith that she's going to give you that job because she has exemplified and demonstrated that she has that state of, you know, the, the, the kind of mindset to give people opportunities, right? Yes. Now it's up to me to go and ask you for a job. You're not gonna give me a job if you don't know that I need a job. That's right. You have to you got to go after it. I gotta go after it. Now I gotta go to okay DB. I say, okay, DB, I, you know, I got this situation going on. I heard that uh, you know, you're a great person, your record has proven that you're a kind person, and I have faith in you that uh if I come to you based on the record that you have maintained over yes. the years that you're more likely to do something good for me if I come to you with an open heart and ask for your help. More than likely, because of my faith in you and the idea that I was able to get up to ask, I prayed about it, I went to you, I had faith that you would help me get, uh, give me a job, you gave me the job. You gave me the job because number one, I prayed. Number one, I have faith and confidence that you are what they say you are. Mm -hmm. And then thirdly, I now had to come to you to ask. And you delivered me into the light. Yes. Now, if I if I sit at home believing I'm that you're going to give me a job, I <laughs> keep praying and don't, don't come me. to you to <laughs> ask for it. Don't put any action behind it. And all yeah. I'm doing is just praying and praying and praying. Yeah. Do you think I'll get that job? Yeah, and, and, not, and not and not acknowledging those who made it possible for you. Yes. This is why it's so important for our people to pour libations, but it's also important for people to know. It's not just Africans who pour libations. Whoever oh, they, you are, they, pour libations and acknowledge your ancestors. They, we they do, do it. That is a they struggle. do it. The Did you know in Ghana? I, I gotta tell you this, you did. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. In Ghana, yeah, they have banned or they're trying to ban libations. Now, hear what I'm saying to you. They are banning libations because it contradicts biblical teachings, I'm sure. Christian values. Yeah, you know, yeah. What, what they, is expected. Now, this this is where we draw the line. Libations is African. This is our way of not only acknowledging the creator, but collectively acknowledging who we are. You can't take that away. Are you kidding? The mind, are you kidding me? The mind is, okay, what you're telling me is like somebody who has faith, gets on an airplane, yes. then decides to jump off without a parachute. Yes. It doesn't matter how much praying you do. When you hit the ground, it's flat. You're done. But if you put a parachute on and you jump off, even though you prayed that hopefully you could survive, you get to pull your parachute. Yeah. It gets to open up. And the wind, <laughs> the wind. and your faith yes. carries you slowly down to earth. Yes. As opposed to just drop it. Yes. See, what's going on in Ghana is we we believe we 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 our history, our culture has been demonized by entities that don't want us to get it together, right? You get rid of the culture, you get rid of the history, it's like a tree without deep roots. That's right. Topples over. It will. You, you just talked about the roots and being anchored and drinking from the rivers and all that kind of stuff. Your history is your footprint. That's right. Let you know where you've been. Let you know where you are today, why you are where you are today, and mm -hmm. where you're going, right? And yeah. it allows you to keep things that are relevant in today's world and jettison things that are not relevant anymore. Things that were relevant a thousand years ago are not necessarily relevant today, depending on what it is. But here's one thing I do know. There's a commandment that is globally accepted, spiritually, by all cultures. Yes. There's no it's or bust about it. And that commandment is simply this. Thou shalt not kill. 
right? Mm -hmm. The greatest threat to you is not a lie. The greatest threat is not, is not because somebody came and got your wife. The greatest threat to you as a human being is death. Am I right or wrong? Of course. Every spirituality or every spiritual philosophy has that. Thou shalt not kill. But here's the funny thing. We kill anyway in the name of the person that gave us that commandment not to kill. Yes. You know, uh, 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 or treasure, I think it's important for people to understand every religious practice, if it causes you to do good, it's okay. I don't care if you're Christian or Muslim or whatever, just understand yeah. the diversity of thought, of cultures, of mind is healthy. It is what Shineke wanted. That's why we're different. If you now come yeah. and say that your it's way divine. is better, and then you take away from people. You, in effect, you're, wrong. you're, wrong you're saying, harmony. yeah. What you're saying to Chineke that that the, the mistake is it, not yeah. ours, but his or hers, whichever uh, uh, part of uh, Chineke you you you're, you're focusing on. Absolutely, <laughs> that's exactly true. You you just nailed it. Diversity is divine, yes. right? Yes. Both in our physical makeup. And the way we think, I'll give you an example. As far as human needs are concerned, some mm -hmm. needs may be just wants or whatever, but in the modern world, I think transportation is a need. And uh, if you have public transportation and you don't have any need to have your own personal ride, that's a different uh, conversation to have. But if you decided that you wanted to buy a car, cars do one thing, it gets you from point A to point B. Yes. But you may go and buy a Cadillac. And you, okay, people who need or want a car will buy a Honda. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're, they're, yeah. both, they're both cars, mm -hmm. but we both don't have to have, like Hondas. Yes. Somebody will buy a Mazda. They're still cars, gets you to point A to point B. Somebody will go buy a Toyota, blah, blah, blah. They are all cars. Same thing with human makeup. The uh, people from the Orient, the Chinese, the Asian. The, the 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 africans uh, the europeans uh, people from the uh, 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 aztec tribe in south america we all have one thing in common we're humans all roses are not red yellow rose red rose a uh, 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 white rose a pink rose or whatever the heck rose you got out there but they're all roses what about cats you got lions you got tigers you got cheetahs leopards the house cat but they are all cats what about dogs you got all kinds of dog. You got the German Shepherd, you got the Collier, you got the, the Beagle, so on and so forth. Trees, oak tree, a, a, a pine tree, a, a Iroko trees, they're all trees. Diversity is divine. God, Chineke, never created anything to be standard. There is no species of any living thing in this world that was created just one species, you know, representing the different uh, 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 forms of life that we have. What about fish? All kinds of fish in the ocean. Nothing is standard. What we have done as human beings using religion is to number one, defile the very sanctity of God and tell us and tell our adherents that God made a mistake. Mm -hmm. Even though we go to church and say that God is all knowledgeable, all powerful, makes no mistake, is all loving, is perfect. At the same time, we look at Chineke's creation and say, well, you know, it doesn't fit our modus operandi or mm -hmm. it doesn't fit, fit whatever our ambitions are. So yeah. that must be wrong yeah. for us to be able to either have these people follow us voluntarily we will have to demonize their culture. If we can't do that, they will have to beat them into submission by killing them, by going after what every human being fears more than anything else, which is death, threat to your physical being. The Catholic Church did the same thing with uh, the, the pagans, the, the country dwellers, the citizens of Rome that are today demonized as pagans, 
The word pagans, a, a, a pagan comes from the word paganus, which simply means a citizen of Rome, a country dweller. They couldn't really kill off all the Romans to force them to join the Catholic Church. So what did they do? They adopted a lot of the pagan traditions into the Catholic Church, making it easier for the Catholic Church to, you know, uh, 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 bring in the Romans because they had a lot of the Roman culture in their uh, uh, Catholic uh, uh, practices. That's why mm -hmm. Italy today has the highest Roman Catholic population mm -hmm. in the world. Now, yeah. whether they still go to church today, I don't know, but it is the Catholic headquarters and all that. So take away what is theirs, supplant it with yours, then you conquer their very soul. You lose your history and you don't have any blueprint. Through the generations, you became you become a nobody. You become uh, nothing. You just you, exist. Oh, George. Yeah. In other words, there's a word that I want everybody who's listening, wherever they are, they need to learn. It's in Igbo. It says Akbasa. And you you do you say it with me? Akbasa. I think it's a book. Okay. I'm going to say it again. Akbasa. Akbasa. I think it's a book. I think it's a book. When you own something, you see, you cannot blame people for what they do. You blame yourself because when you own something and you throw it away, you'll never get rich. My father, when we were young, my father did that all the time. When we were, you know, we throw things away we don't want to eat or, or whatever it is that we own that we don't mm. take care of. And he will remind you, Akbasa Atufo yeah. Our wealth is our culture. Now, the culture is diverse. Make no mistake about it. It is a global world. We can feed off each other, but we can never abandon that which yeah. is popular. I'm not saying, and it's important to know, we're not saying that only this culture that we're expressing here is vital. No. No. We're saying look to yours as well. When you discard yours, you're implanting, like you said, someone else's. Okay? Yeah, I mean. And when they know that you are weak, that you're willing to give up, that's when you run into trouble. And we must go and have a conversation about what this program is today. Morning. We're here to mourn. Many of us have individuals in our lives that have left us and we're mourning. I just want to share mine before we talk. My mother. Our mother. Passed away. My dad, my grandfather, all of our 90th birthday, and my father, my dad. Oh, it was, a, it was a wonderful day. Let's see you telling my face, myself, and my sister behind her, and uh, my daughter. There she is. Beautiful, still, beautiful, still. And when I know it, I was so cool to oh, the end. She was the most fashionable person yeah. that I've ever known. Oh. She had style. Yeah, she had the presence. Yeah. She had it all. She had it all. She carried herself with so much dignity, man. It wasn't Look even her. funny. That's you know, this 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 she this is no how I, I just gotta say this. Oh. this is one of the few African women. Oh God! And I and I mean it. This is one of the few African women that stood with the culture. Yes. That never sold out. Yes. To nobody. She was nobody. part of the fight for independence in Nigeria. Yes. She used to be the 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 uh, uh, the director general of the uh, women's uh, uh, association of the uh, I think it was uh, the the Guardian Women Association. That's right. Yeah, she was the 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 national the president. patron. National the patron. National patron. She never sold out her culture. She no. never bowed down to any reasoning. 
no. that diminished her as an African woman. She yes. stood by Ahainke Oke Onyoha, and Ahain never would have achieved anything that he achieved in his life if it wasn't for the fact that he was married to a woman like my mother, no one of Umpuru. And to me, the greatest lady that ever walked the earth. I know everybody loves their mother and everybody would say the same thing. I hey, I don't blame anybody. It's just the way it is. Everybody mom is mom. Your favorite woman is your mama. Man or woman, it's just the way it is. But I make a distinction with my mom because she lived a life I never compromised her dignity as an African. Yes. And I can't say that for a lot of black women. I can't. I'm sorry. I apologize. And if he offends you, it is the truth. For half of y'all, 90 some percent, maybe 99 percent, you're in church every Sunday. I don't see any one of you when it comes to supplication to your chineke, the, 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 the God of your people before we were resocialized, before they came to our shores with the Quran or the Bible. I don't see too many black women that identify themselves as Africans all the way down. I'm not talking about the clothes you wear. I'm not talking about your hairstyle. I'm not talking about the shoes on your feet or the kind of music you listen and dance to. Yes. I'm talking about you looking at yourself and going, I am what I am by the grace of the almighty Chineke. And if you don't like it, let the door hit you. <laughs> and you can finish up that statement for me. You, you, you know? No, I did it. No, I did it. No, I did it. I was not apologetic. None, not was, at all. Was not apologetic. So when we mourn her, and when you mourn, when you really mourn a lost, a family member you've lost, you need to think about the person. Think about all the positives. Think about what what life was when they were there. What life meant to you when they were there because they were there. Yeah. yeah. You see, uh, some people say to you, well, you know, she lived uh, a long life. Well, you know, so, uh, no. If, if she could have been here 120 years, I would have loved it. It doesn't diminish the value of a life in African culture is not, is not uh, devalued because the person is old. It As a matter of fact, it's a mom. It doesn't you, you, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. I want to read something somebody wrote here. This is uh, Adoha. In some metaphysical principles, uh, wearing black as a morning uh, as, as more as a morning representation is a protective tool against evil hunting by past loved ones. So partners wore black to ward off hunting of loved ones. That's, that, a that's yeah. That's a, that's, a, that's a cultural when when people wear black, you know. Yeah. To, you know. Why why I said it's a mouthful is this. In 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 not so many words, this is the first time that something black represents good. If you read what she just wrote in some metaphysical principles, wearing black as a morning as a morning representation. It's a protective tool. When was the last time anything black was protective? It used to be white stuff is protective. The water of black devil is black. Black is this, black is that. Well, that's because we don't know. And that's why it's important for people to know. That's why it's important. For, and as a matter of fact, there are some cultures where when the person who passes away leaves, when somebody passes away, they have to take everything that belonged to that person and put it away. For a long period of time until the morning period is over. Why do you think that's the case? I'm gonna challenge you. Why do you think that's the case? Well, it's it, again, it's all metaphysics, right? For whatever reason, there are certain practices that happen, and those practices really serve one purpose and one purpose only: behavioral control, right? Hmm. Some metaphysical reason is responsible for that, and 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 in the end, it is a way to comport or conduct your behavior while you're alive so that you're just not somebody who takes people or things for granted. The greatest fear that people have beyond dying is what happens after that, right? That's really where religion comes in. 
Is it over with just when you die physically? Is that it? Or is there something else? And every spiritual philosophy tries to answer that question, the question of the other realm, the duality of existence, right? The physical and the spiritual. In the Christian context, you talk about heaven, that's where you go and all that. For us, we talk about Alaga, Alamma, right? Where the ancestors are and what have you. Every culture has that. I think that really has to do with your behavior during the morning period. But, but here, here's, here's the reason why they do that. In addition to what you said, mm. the, the idea is that they want the person to move on to the spiritual world and not yeah. hang, hang around. Yeah. So if they have their things still hanging around, it is mm. believed that, that that spirit is not going to move away. They will hang around because their things are still in place. So why the the, the morning period is being uh, 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 practiced? You know, so for some people it's like forty days. Some people it's it's months on end. You have mm. to put their things away so that they don't come back and hover around because you need them to move on to become ancestors so that they can become protective forces. Yeah, Not behavior of uh, yeah behavior of the spirit. I got yeah. one. I got African, one. Yeah, it's an African practice. Yeah. And then the other thing, the other thing that okay, go ahead. You were going to say something. No, I'm just, I'm just going to say, yeah, uh, 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 behavior of uh, uh, behavior of the spirits, right? But there's a culture. I think it's in the Philippines. They never bury their dead. When somebody dies, they embalm that person, you know, so that you know they, they don't really decay and all that. And they keep that person in the house. And once every year, they bring the person back out, sit them down on a chair, and they all have dinner together. After that, they put him back where you know they belong, and they keep him, keep him there. That's the diversity. That's yeah. the diversity in, in morning. So there's no specific best way. Um, no. uh, Ador has said it is believed that earthly possessions grounds them to the spiritual realm instead yeah. of moving them onto a higher level that's yeah. why you've got to move it's not saying that you should destroy it though they're not saying destroy that what they uh your the departed left behind they're saying instead that you should put them away so that they get confused they don't find their way back to the spiritual you know to this life instead they they they, uh, they move to the to higher grounds now the muslims in Muslim faith, uh, um, uh, the Buddhists, the Buddhists rather, the Buddhists burn, they burn the body. Why do they burn them? They burn oh. them because in, the, the spirit leaves the body the flame. faster yeah. when they're burned than mm. if they're buried. Yeah, some some uh, Asian cultures, I can't remember, I don't know if it's uh, Taoist, I'm not too sure. Don't quote me on that. I can't really remember. Yeah. But when when people die, they actually bring them to this hill. And then they leave the body there. And the buzzards will now come down and pick the, uh, uh, the skin, the meat, the flesh off the dead body mm -hmm. until the only thing that is left is the bones. Then they the bury it. They just don't put you in the ground. They actually feed you to the buzzards. Yes. So there's diversity all over the world. You see, it comes back to what you were talking in the beginning about diversity, about these people coming to Ghana and then telling them that they should leave what they're doing and oh. do it their way. There's no. diversity in all things. It mm -hmm. is divine because if Chineke didn't create that diversity, it would not exist. So yes. we have to really appreciate diversity and not look down on the cultural practices of all the people because in the end, in the end, nobody has the truth. And in and, and, and the morning, that that's true. In African culture as well, because of their belief in the ancestors, when somebody dies, they mark the person. Mm -hmm. 
They must, so it's not all gloom and doom that somebody passed away. Of course, it depends on if it's a child that passed away or or somebody who's reached uh, the right old age, you know. Yeah. Uh, a, a lot of times they mark the person anticipating that, particularly if the person is not it, it died when they are younger, they may mm -hmm. mark that person anticipating that if they are journey to, you know, uh, a re reincarnation, they may come back as your son or your daughter. And they are individuals right now that actually believe that they are the uh, reincarnate of maybe an uncle or a grandmother or a grandfather or something like that. Is that not true? No, it's uh, absolutely true. I, I wanted to say something about ancestors. You just brought that up. I, I just I just need to say this because I don't think that the people out there really understand that ancestral reverence is global, right? We may have we may put more emphasis on ancestor ancestral reverence because it's part of our spirituality, a part of our spiritual process, right? When we pray. Mm -hmm. But ancestral reverence is part of every religious philosophy. It's, it's part of the history every culture. Every, every culture. culture. It's part of your cultural history. If yeah. you're a Christian, you go to the Bible, Abraham, Moses, Ruth, Gideon, Samson, King Solomon. These are all ancestors. David, it's all ancestral reverence. You go to Islam, Hussein Muhammad, Muhammad himself, and all these other Islamic scholars through the centuries. These are all ancestors. You go to Buddhism, Jainism, Judaism, uh, 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 Baha'ulehism. Uh, 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 Shinto is every religious philosophy is about ancestral reverence, but reverence. not every religious philosophy has a supreme being, a supreme uh, uh, creator. You understand? Not yeah. all of them, but all of them have ancestral reverence because it is because of the ancestors that the philosophy exists in the first place. That's right. I, and I, I don't have said something that I want to just repeat. You, you talked about uh, the practice of leaving dead body in, yeah. you know, for the vultures. That's a Mongolian practice. Mongolia, yeah, border, yeah. So they yeah, don't yeah, have Mongolia, yeah. At least not like we have in all these different. No, no, yeah, yeah. that's it. Mm -hmm. They do. It usually it's the sick. It's the sick and and dead children. Mm. You haven't achieved anything in life yet. That's who they yeah. there. But if leave it's uh, okay. like a leader, somebody of some power, like that, yeah. then you mm -hmm. bury them. But okay. you know, that, yeah. that's how the Mongolian uh, uh, program works. Program works, okay. okay. Yeah. So, and the other thing in, in African spirituality that uh, uh, we should understand, it's not the same thing in every African culture because there are some African cultures where people, when people, somebody dies, everybody wears white. Mm -hmm. Not black. They don't. They wear. They wear white. Not now. As uh, Doha has explained, we wear black because of protection. Okay. I'm not sure exactly. I'm going to look it up. Why some of them choose to wear white when somebody dies? Have you, have you ever seen that culture where they wear white? So I just wanted to point out mm -hmm. in terms of the clothing. You know that not all African cultures do that. Many do that, but some don't. And then uh, when, when in, in our culture, when a, 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 a man dies, his wife will have to shave her hair. Mm -hmm. They have to shave her hair and they have to be in seclusion for so many, for a year, I believe it's a year. Uh, I don't yeah. think they're practicing that anymore because I think some sisters protested being secluded that, <laughs> that, <laughs> so, that particular uh, uh, program is not, uh, it, didn't, it, didn't, it didn't last too long <laughs> you know i mean yeah uh, because, quite frankly when the, uh, the the woman dies he's not going to be mourning for a year yeah i mean the the the, 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 the zulu culture i don't know if they still do it now but zulu culture in ancient times when somebody of substance doesn't yeah. necessarily have to be a king, but you know, somebody of substance in the uh, uh, community dies, they bury him along with a servant. Yeah. You know, believing yeah. that that person is going to serve 
the, 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 the guy with the social clout in the spirit world and will, you know, will be his, uh, person, his servant and serve him in the afterlife. I, so guess, to speak. I don't so, think they're still doing that anymore. No, no, they're not doing that anymore. I mean, it, Africans are not the only cultures that practice stuff like that. It also happened, you know, in China, right? Mm -hmm. So it's not, it's not like an African thing. In South America, the, the Aztec were doing, uh, I mean, uh, 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 you got the Aztecs, you know, they, they did uh, practice something yeah. similar to that. And yeah. as a matter of fact, uh, some of those uh, kingdoms, you know, depending on the time in history, when the king dies, they will sacrifice somebody. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Not just one, two, several people will be sacrificed or several people will be buried mm -hmm. with that person. I yeah. think in China, uh, some of these cons used to be buried with their personal guards, mm -hmm. you know, personal bodyguards or whatever, you know. So mm -hmm. uh, that's not something that should make everybody go, oh my God, Africans are crazy. No, no. This, there were other cultures in the world you know, as a matter of fact, there's some things that we don't even know about right now, you know, as we continue to evolve and we continue to deal in archaeology and, mm. and learn about the past, you know, hidden history, uh, so mm. to speak, you mm. know, we're not going to be shocked at some of the things that we may find out, you know, mm. how we behave way back. So when you look at some of these practices, you have to put them in context, right? Mm. In, in time and space, uh, 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 the level of uh, 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 scientific knowledge that existed at that time, because yeah. normally ancient times, things that we didn't understand, we tried to explain it using spiritual type, yeah. you know, explanations right. ahead right. to to control behavior and to explain it away so that way it's not out there like uh, what do you call that, like the boogeyman, so to speak. Then it is said that science is the enemy of religion. So mm -hmm. as things evolve, as we begin to gain knowledge, we're going to find out that some of those practices were just being done out of ignorance. Yeah. You know, and not for anything that is, you know, uh, substantially uh, 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 right, so to speak. So. Yeah, you know. and, and it's also very important um, that we, the living, so to speak, mm -hmm. we must be cognizant that it is imperative for the dead to be buried peacefully. Yes. You cannot have strife in the middle of trying to bury someone. You cannot have strife because the dead will not rest. Yep. The whole African African tradition is that uh, the uh, is to ensure that the deceased probably is properly put uh, to rest you know, at peace, if you surround them, if you surround the dead with confusion, if you surround them with strife, they're not going to, they will hang around. They don't go no. away. They will hang around until whatever that issue is, is resolved. Not but just that. Those, in some form or the other, they will punish those who continue to create the strife. Yeah, we're just going to around their uh, funeral, around their burial. So this is very important. I, I took the time to read that to make sure I understand it. You cannot bury anyone around strife. The the dead will not be happy. At least that's that the culture. They will not be happy, and they will hover and hover and hover. So if you want them to ascend, you have to have peace. And if there's anything that you have done to the dead, if there's anything you have done while they were alive, you must atone for it. Not expect it to wash away. It will not go away. Just because no, it won't go away because, you, you know. So yeah. it's imperative. And I, I'm saying this. If you have a parent, a brother or a sister who has passed away, whatever it is you did to them, you have got to atone for it. They don't forget, not according to the culture. You now, not only atone for whatever you've done that is wrong to them. And in some communities, that means go and kill a cow. That means you, go, you have to do something 
to atone for whatever you did to them while they're alive. It's not going to go away just because they're buried. No. You know why it's not going to go away? It's not going to go away because it is not them hunting you. It is you hunting your own self because you're always going to remind yourself of just how terrible you were to those people. Yes. Right? The, the, whatever sins that you may have committed, whatever it is that you may have done, if you don't atone for it, you're the one who will have to live with it. And it's going to eat you up slowly. And in your mind, you're going to say that they're the ones hunting you. They may be hunting you, but most of the hunting is going to be done by your own mind. Because you're not, your mind is not at ease. Mm -hmm. Your guilt will eat you up. Yes. And make you do things that you ordinarily wouldn't do. Will make you behave in, in ways that may cause strife within your own family, your mm -hmm. friends, mm -hmm. your work, or whatever it is. It will eat you up slowly and eventually it will kill you. Mm -hmm. So when you're atoning for what you've done against somebody, please understand that it's really for your own peace of mind that you're doing it. Because That's if right. you don't have a peace of mind, you're never going to enjoy your time on earth. It will That's eat right. you up and it will eventually kill you. You cannot rest. You cannot have peace. You can't. Now, I, I will tell you, I'm, I'm not suggesting that, oh, we are at peace with everybody. We are lovey-dovey. You know, sometimes we have discord with people. It's understandable. But if you know that you did and that person passes away, you must atone. Yep. You must do something to atone. You may even have an event in the honor of that person. But you know, the other thing I wanted to add is, we need to understand family structure. We must understand family structure. What is the culture of that family in terms of how the dead is buried? You must make sure that you're following protocol. Because if you don't follow protocol, you are abusing the spirit of the person that you are supposed to be burying. What is the family protocol? Who's in charge? Find out who's in charge. Who's the elder? Who are the elders? Whatever they recommend. Don't fight them. Give support. Am I right or am I wrong? No, you're absolutely right. What, what is it that daddy says in situations? Uh, everybody that. dancing to their own beat. It's just, uh, I mean, think of yourself on a dance floor. And they are playing... 10 different kinds of songs at the same time. Mm -hmm. And there are 10 different groups of people in there, each of them dancing to one specific song. I mean, just think of how chaotic that dance floor is going to look like. That's right. You, you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So things need to be done in unison. There has to be uh, a hierarchy. Yes. Right? Yes. Uh, I right now, I tell my ex-wife that I, I mean, not my ex-wife, excuse me. I tell my wife you know, my dear, uh, that uh, I'm, I've joined her as an orphan because I don't have my mom and I don't have my father anymore. So there's a level of emptiness that comes along with that. Yes. And some of the connections that you had back home beyond your own blood, right? Yes. It's severed. Suddenly it's severed. And yeah. you start asking yourself, what's really the point? At least where I come from and I be a state there, the place is like a madhouse. And at some point, you know, whatever it is that connected me there, I just felt that it's, it's just gone, right? But then I turn around, I say to myself, well, if I were the first son, then I have this obligation to be there mm -hmm. to continue the family legacy. Yes. But I have an older brother back there. So all of a sudden, the chain that I felt that was broken now turns into the loss of a link. That's mm -hmm. it. We are still anchored back there mm -hmm. because of that family structure, that yeah. hierarchy. We're yeah. still anchored back there. Yeah. Right? Yes. Then I have an older sister, the first daughter. Mm -hmm. 
suddenly I have an older brother, the first son. I have an older sister. You know, uh, 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 my, uh, my older sister, the first daughter. Then all of a sudden, on my mom's side, a chain link just fell off. And on my daddy's side, a chain link just fell off. But we're still anchored. Yes. You're anchored we're, to your elders. I'm anchored to my elders. We're still there. There's yes. still structure. I still have a, 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 a desire to go back home, travel back home, and connect. Because I got my brother over there. That's right. You see what I'm saying? Uh -huh. you so got family over there. I got they, family over there. He anchors me. That's your brother, but, eldest brother, and then yeah, for my immediate people. family. I'm not talking about cousins, and I'm not talking about you know my other sister there or my other brother. I'm talking about hierarchy. Yeah, the family structure. Yes. those people that we defer to when it comes to decision making. We make decisions collectively, but it's more of putting an input. And then we put input, they see the wisdom in what we talk about, and they say, yes, that's the way to go. So a lot of the actions they take are based on our input. They don't just go out and say, this is what's going to happen, and it happens. It doesn't work like that. Yeah. We're all elders in the family. Yeah. You're that's an elder, why, I'm an elder. That's why it's so important. That is why it's so important that when, we, when Africans mourn, they really need to understand the family. They need to understand the yes. mores, the law, the structure, you know, the structure, so yeah. that things will move, move. You can be cohesive move, and yeah, continue. Yeah. So that the dead will have peaceful rest. Because yep. when that doesn't happen, it doesn't matter what you come up with. The dead, the ancestor hovers around because they're not satisfied. And we don't want that. You should not ever, in your family, whoever you are, wherever you are, you always have to understand how your family works. In honor of your relative, you must understand that. And I want to just say to everyone in closing, this has been a spirited discussion, but we leave you today with presenting you with the chalk. I didn't do it initially, but at home, you should have this. Inside of this, it has coiling, okay? It's like exactly. chalk, and you use it, and you put it on your left wrist. That means you're welcome. I didn't present it initially, but I'm presenting it now because I must. If you don't have this in your home, please do. It doesn't mean that's only that signifies that you're African. It just that's our practice that we're sharing with you is our spiritual practice, but it's a social practice. And in closing, please remember who your ancestors are. If you are part of any country, you know, when we here in America, we're going Black Lives Matter. We protest. Yeah. Once once something is wrong, we want to go out there and protest as we must. But if we are in Africa, if you are an African person and you're being told to discard a tradition as powerful as libations, your tie, your connection to the spiritual world, your connection with your ancestors. I have days that my daughter will ask me, my daughters, they'll ask me, mom, could you come over? We want to talk to the ancestors. And I'll go over and we pour libations. We can feel them. We have conversations. Now, you may not believe that, but then that's what faith is about. We don't let go of them. And they don't let go of us. So we ask them for what we want and they deliver. Pour libations in the morning or in the afternoon or at night, whenever time is convenient for you. They never stop pouring libations. Never stop honoring the departed in the most dignified way that you can, in your cultural way. Understand your culture as you work very hard to give them a decent send-off. You do you want you want to do it. Yeah, I just want to say something real quick about this libation thing. Let's not, and I'm talking about the people out there, please don't ever think that it is the Catholic Church in Rome that told the Ghanaians to stop pouring libation. No. It is the Ghanaian Catholics mm -hmm. that are telling Liber I mean, Ghanaians mm -hmm. to stop pouring libation. 
That's right. Because they need to indoctrinate as many people within their local population as possible. Go into your pocketbook so you could they could have access to your 10%, whether you're rich or poor. This is simply local. It is a problem for the Ghanaians to address. It is a Ghanaian Catholic problem and has nothing to do with Rome. I just wanted to put it out there. We are our own worst enemies. Thank you. We are the ones now destroying ourselves. Yes. There's no the Catholic The ancestors will not appreciate that. Yeah, there's no Catholic <laughs> priest in Rome with a gun <laughs> to your head telling you to stop pouring libation. Yes. This is local. This is the Ghanaian Catholic Church. This is about Ghanaians trying to destroy Ghana and its culture and its history. And they so they could have access to the millions of Ghanaians out there yes. running around confused, bleaching their skins, taking pills so that their babies will come out light-skinned, hating everything that is dark and right. extolling everything that is light. Not right. understanding that yeah. darkness does not exist without light and yeah. light does not exist without darkness. Good needs evil to exist and vice versa. That yeah. is the philosophy of life. Yes. Duality. Yes. And on that note, I just want to say, I want to thank everybody who joined us today. Um, we're going to do, we have uh, libations uh, once every, uh, every month. And uh, we're going to have another libations at the end of April. But next week, we're going to have a, a usual discussion. I thank you so very much for joining us. And I hope all of you have a wonderful, wonderful day. Yeah, guys, yeah, you know. Yeah, guys, yeah. Everything. Oh, you yeah. Know. <laughs> you throw it in. You say, oh, you say. I just wanted to put in these very last comments. Gemesiano, Yagazia.